I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about a new front-end framework, page transitions, designing for thumbs, and more. Let's check it out. First up is concise. Well, that about covers that. Oh, I guess I should say a little bit more about it. Uh, concise is a better front end framework. I know that because it says it right here on the website. It says, I feel like they could have summed that up a little bit better. Just been a little bit more concise. concise. It says, give up the bloat, stop tripping over your classes. Yeah, man, quit tripping. Be concise. <laughs> Down here, it says it's perfect for all devices. So it's, it's responsive, mobile first. Uh, that's always good. You can use it with your favorite preprocessor, and it's highly expandable, so it's very easy to customize it and use some add-ons. A bunch of people are using it. Now, you're probably thinking at this point, well, there's a lot of front-end frameworks. In fact, we talk about them all the time on the Treehouse Show. What makes this one different? Well, if you click on Why Concise... Sum it up in one word. Concise. It is actually aptly named. It says, there are a million other front-end frameworks out there. What makes Concise unique? And basically, it's the things that I just said. It has a lot fewer features than a framework like Bootstrap or Foundation. So it's not going to have tabs and modals and all that sort of stuff. But what it does have is a grid, typography, and just a few very basic features that you actually need to get started making websites. Now, if you are familiar with something like Foundation, you're going to find that the syntax is very similar for grids. So you have a row, and then you can create columns. Anywho, that's concise. and Yeah, I don't think we need to say any more than that. That's pretty much it. I think you summed it up pretty well. Check it out. Next up, we have a blog post over on CSS Tricks about adding page transitions with CSS and a plugin called smoothstate.js. Now, this attempts to address the issue where you click on a link in a web page, and then the page is loading, the screen kind of turns white while the page is loading, and then everything else gets loaded. Now, smoothstate.js is a plugin that will attempt to fetch the new page over AJAX, then apply some CSS transitions, and make the whole process less disorienting and jarring for a user. Now, let's go ahead and just check out the demo to see exactly what they're talking about. And you'll see here is just a web page. This is the demo page for Smooth State. And then if I click this link, get it, get started with smoothstate.js, and watch my computer screen, and you'll see that nothing really happened. There was no flash to white. It just sort of smoothly loaded and applied this transition. Now, if I click back, you'll see the transition gets applied again, and so on for the different links. Now, if we go back over to the CSS Tricks article, there's a great walkthrough from the author who demonstrates how to go through all this. First, he demonstrates the problem. Well, this is kind of how janky it looks when just clicking around to a web page. Okay, there's a flash of white. Well, let's go ahead and fix it. So the first thing that he says is, hey, let's identify how the elements will animate. Do we want to slide up and fade in, slide from the right? Uh, and then, so you figure that out, then create the different keyframes that you need. Uh, we'll create those in CSS. Once those are created, we can go ahead and write the CSS declarations using those keyframes, and then add those classes back to the layout. Now you'll see that results in a nicer entrance to the pages, but you still see the flash. That is where the smoothstate.js plugin comes to the rescue. This is a nice little jQuery plugin. It gives you some different options saying, hey, this is the content that we're trying to animate in between. This is how long we want the animation to occur. That's going to be in milliseconds. And then what animation state class to apply. Uh, then there's a little bit more CSS to go through and do that. Now, uh, the nice thing about this plugin is that it also has an option to prefetch the data in the page. So when a user is hovering over a link on a page, it'll actually go out and fetch that, keep it in memory. That way, as soon as the user actually clicks, it will seem like no time has gone by at all. It's actually kind of you know, misleading in that way, but in a good way. It's 
pretty smooth. Yep. Well, transitioning, uh, I want to talk about this blog post called How to Design for Thumbs in the Era of Huge Screens. Now, if, if, if you have an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus or maybe some of these new enormous Android phones, like I think the Nexus 7? 6. 6. 6. Six just Six. came out, and they're they're pretty epically huge phones. And if you've tried to use one one-handed, you probably know that it's hard to reach certain parts of the screen, depending on kind of how you're gripping it. They're two-handed phones. They definitely are. They're they're iPad Nanos. So this article attempts to address at least some of the research behind how you might start to design for these huge screen. So if we scroll down here, there's some pretty wonderful graphics that show where the natural sweeping arc of your thumb might land on different screen sizes. So over here we have an iPhone to 4S and it's pretty easy to reach just about any part of the screen. You don't have to stretch a whole lot and you can tap just about anything. As you move all the way up to the iPhone 6 Plus, there's a pretty small area that you can actually easily reach with your thumb. And you can stretch to reach some other parts of the screen, but eventually it's kind of impossible, even if you have pretty large hands, to hit some of the areas in the corners and hit some of those uh, UI elements. So what do you do? Well, this article sums up some of that research pretty well. It shows you know, how people might grip their phone a little bit differently and maybe reach uh, higher parts of the screen. Talks about reachability. Anyway, really great post and definitely one to read if you are designing websites because these new screen sizes are becoming more and more popular. Yes. I think they have a graph in there showing how like it represents 15% or more of mobile browsing now. So, so you got to keep all the good content in the thumb zone. It's 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 no longer enough to worry about what's below the fold. You got to worry about what Cuz fingers don't fold. That's right. You got to worry about what you can hit with your thumbs. Outside of the thumb zone is the danger zone. Yes. Call that's, Kenny Loggins. That's concise. Next up, we have a plugin called converse.js. This is a really interesting free piece of JavaScript that allows you to add XMPP or Jabber Chat to your website. And there are a bunch of different plugins for different CMSs. There's integration with Plone, Django, Roundcube, WordPress, PatternsLib, and Alfresco. I know a few of those. Alfresco is delicious, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so this features single user chat, bunch of different chat rooms, just a ton of different things, vCard support, service discovery, so many different things. Now, you are going to need an XMPP or Jabber server if you do want to get this set up. But all you really need to do, despite this very thorough documentation, is include the CSS and the JavaScript, initialize it with uh, some different items like the service URL and kind of some different options like whether or not you want to list rooms and auto subscribe to different things and then you are good to go. So this is similar to Facebook chat but also supports multi-user chat rooms and it features off the record encrypted messaging as well as sound notifications and it also has multilingual support. Supports most commands that you would think from banning, clearing the messages, setting topics, and even changing your nickname. So what you'll need to get started is, like we said, an XMPP server, a connection manager, and access to the server to overcome cross-domain request restrictions. And there's different configuration options in, for both Nginx and Apache about how to get that set up. Anyway, if you are looking to add chat to your site, this is a pretty easy way to get started, so make sure to check it out. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is Pushy. This is an off-canvas navigation menu, and what's cool about this is that it uses CSS transforms and transitions. That's uh, kind of boring. Let's just see what this does. Yeah. Whoa, look at that. When I click the menu button, it slides over from the left, and you've probably seen this design pattern before on mobile devices and apps and on websites. 
but this is a common pattern because it saves on space and it also is responsive, so that's pretty nice. Don't they call that a hamburger menu? They do call it a hamburger menu, and we've talked about this before, Jason. I wish you wouldn't bring that up because now I'm really hungry. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But what are you doing after this? I'm thinking about getting... Yeah, we should do that. Hamburger. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be pushy about it, but we should do it. It, sound, it sounds delicious. So I mentioned this uses CSS transforms and transitions. That's really nice because those actually render on the GPU, so it's going to give you nice smooth frame rates in the browser. And it also still has a jQuery animation fallback for Internet Explorer 7 through 9. So if these CSS transforms and transitions are not supported, you can still enjoy this animation. It just might not look quite as smooth. This requires jQuery 1.9. It works in all the most popular browsers, and it also works great on mobile. And if we head over to the documentation, it will take us over to GitHub, and you can read more about how to actually install it with a package manager like Bower, and how to include it onto your page. Anyway, not a whole lot to say about it, but I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, nice little plugin. Uh, well, that's about all we have time for this week. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, go ahead and check out our show notes right below this video. And thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk to you next week.